Good morning. Mr. Chancellor, Mr. President, members of the graduating class, faculty, family, and friends. It is with a great sense of honor that I share this podium with you, our graduating class of 2016. Honored and privileged for many reasons, not the least among which is that I have had the privilege to cross this podium now after today's presentation on three separate occasions. And because, much like you, I suspect, these occasions have proven and will continue to prove to be transformative in my life. Today has been long and hard in the making for you and your families and your supporters. Congratulations. Savor and enjoy this day together. And my wish for you is to always have loved ones around you as you punctuate life's important passages. You now join a most special group of people, those of us around the world who are alumni of this most special university on the banks of the Otonabi, Trent. In the years to come, you will find that this group is an important and enabling one to belong to, having as it does at its basis the shared and uniting values of sustainability, respect for multiple perspectives, multidisciplinarity, and thought anarchy the foundations of a Trent University education. Now, each of us, each of us at our core, wish to be happy. And so we pursue this most elusive of states through most of our lives. Careers, relationships, arduous journeys of endeavor, all are motivated by our innate wish to be happy. Jose Marti, the great Cuban thinker, had this to say about happiness. Happiness exists on earth, and it is one through prudent exercise of reason, knowledge of the harmony of the universe, and constant practice of generosity. Marti's insight resonates with me, and with great delight, I recently encountered a similar prescription among the Makushis of the high savannas and rainforests of my native Guyana. Tumnauru shima marenteke eno. Only through respect for and accommodation of the needs of all living things can we truly live successful and happy lives. Such clarity of the dependent position of humankind's happiness leads inevitably in today's world to the realization of the precarious nature of our pursuit of happiness. Because now, unlike any other time in the brief history of our civilization, we face a nexus of self-inflicted challenges to the realization of happiness and quite likely the survival of our planet. At no other time in history has there been such a maldistribution of power, food, energy, and capital between the haves and have-nots of the world. This, whilst our planet faces massive upheaval through global warming due to anthropomorphic proliferation of carbon in our atmosphere, water resources dwindle, Essential minerals for agriculture are entropically scattered and increasingly scarce, and environmental degradation is ignored in the mad rush to maintain our positions of economic privilege or to join the ranks of the economically privileged. Even now, as we march with a spendthrift disregard for the finite nature of the fossil fuels that provides the mirage of empires which seems to beckon all nations. Our concerns with narrow borders continue to cloud the global collective action which is necessary for survival of our planet. Whew, this is some heavy stuff to listen 
on the happy day of your graduation? Or are these professor types so immersed in their own navel gazing as to with indecent disregard to the waiting feast and festivities dampen the spirits of all and sundry? Quite the contrary. And for those of you who are my students, and I think there are seven of you graduating today, you know very well that I am first in line at the beer tent. <laughs> but I highlight these challenges because not only are they of present and urgent importance, but because I firmly believe that this state of affairs defines the fertile, or Marilyn Burns, fecund, Opportunities for you in this 2016 Trent University graduating class to write your names in large writ on the pages of the 21st century. That fine Uruguayan writer, Eduardo Galeano, puts it very simply. Richness in the world is a result of other people's poverty. We should begin to shorten the abyss between the haves and the have-nots. Of course, this takes much more in the doing than the stating. But lend me your ears for a little while longer, for I be firmly believe that this journey, which you began at Trent several years ago, today has acquired the momentum required for you to begin to be agents of this change movement. I know, here is Suresh Narayan spouting off about changing the world, when most of you are more concerned about landing a job and maybe beginning to pay off those student loans. But our world situation calls not for pedestrian and provincial thinking. Rather, your call is the call of world citizenship. You will be surprised that in the pursuit of loftier goals, fulfilling careers will be defined and nurtured. You're leaving Trent today with a toolbox of skills most important among which is the ability to think critically, communicate and collaborate across disciplines, respect multiple viewpoints, and embrace change. The box itself is the pursuit of lifelong learning. Those of us who embrace a new egalitarian world order that guarantees a life in the pursuit of happiness and learn to redefine ourselves using this toolbox, shall find success behind every problem. Today, I continue to find assistance in my message to you in the words of our great Latin American thinkers, this time from the inimitable Colombian, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, who declares with deep insight, human beings are not born once and for all on the day their mothers give birth to them. But life obliges them over and over again to give birth to themselves. If you're resolved to remove disparities, embrace sustainability, and respect our ecosystem is to remain unwavering, you will find it necessary to change your approach multiple times over the course of your career. But the learning toolbox that you have honed these past several years at Trent will provide the means to do so. So then, how to set about on this journey? It is important that you recognize the importance of the vote. The alarming apathy towards participation in the democratic process across the world means that we are abandoning one of the most powerful mechanisms for change. I do realize that voting alone is not sufficient if you're faced with choices between bad and slightly more bad. And I'm not pointing fingers at any place close to us. But the answer to this is not to disengage. The importance of the vote can only be restored if you organize, discuss, reason and collaborate locally and in the growing momentum globally across languages and geographies. And from among you, enable, nurture, and empower the kinds of leadership which is required for a new world order. Leaders who listen to, understand, and are motivated by the language of mutual respect, equal opportunity for all, 
and the importance of community over self, the ascendancy of the world's health over national health. This process will demand that you act locally, embrace community enterprise and success as an essential ingredient of your own success, and that you understand the importance and reach of your local involvement on similar movements of peoples across the globe. This, of course, cannot be accomplished without increasing north-south dialogue among common peoples, without finding common ground for communication between haves and have-nots. But even whilst the need is dire, the tools avail themselves. Even in the most remote villages in the Pacaraima Mountains of Guyana and the jungles of Papua New Guinea, now, and with growing frequency, access to the internet avails itself. Now, more than ever, the world of ideas and solutions can be cross-fertilized with ease. The journey also means adjusting our value systems and our indicators for success. Recall Adam Smith's The Wealth of Nations, the dependence of this wealth on land, labor, and capital, we need to begin to see wealth as composed of health and happiness, and not just of humankind, but health and harmony of our ecosystem. We need to realize that land encompasses environmental health of our air, water, and earth, and of the essential microbes and minerals and ecosystems that guarantee sustainable existence. We need to underscore the pivotal importance of labor, where the pursuit of happiness and the right to do so and expect success in this pursuit is not a function of place, geography, ancestry, or national borders. And our approach to capital must change. Collective capital, community ownership, and prosperity through community enterprise, crowd financing, fair approaches to microcredit, technology solutions and innovations, and the wealth of solutions among the indigenous peoples of our world must be essential elements of our concept of capital. As you sally forth, eager to begin the next chapter of your lives, spare a thought for these ideas and take your place among, among those that will restore beauty natural justice, and harmony to our world. Through prudent reason, knowledge of the harmony of the world, and constant generosity of spirit. Once again, I salute your accomplishment and wish you all Godspeed. Thank you.